Hello and welcome to Arindam Zoo. I am Arindam and in part 7 of my zoo series, I will be taking you on a tour of the beach exhibits from the mighty dodo to the carquinos. In the previous video, videos, we had covered the exhibits on the swamp, aviary, the herbivores, the sauropods, insects and raptors and now we are going to look at something a bit more gentle. So for that we need to head on to the beach. We have the beach biome over here from the mighty dodo to those crabs called carquinos. And obviously we have our mascot at the entrance, the mighty dodo. This is one of the most recent biomes that I had created and I did not know where to put all of these small creatures because you know the beach is not exactly suited to all of the different types of creatures that are present here right so let's start off with this guy these are ichthyornis i know you hate them but they are here they're not doing anything they're not flying but these are ichthyornis and let's see ah very appropriate caption lived a thief died a thief as an ichthyornis would say and this is quite frankly a very uh, humorous display that i made for these things okay before we go into that part let's come to this part first the first real exhibit is the famous Dimetrodon. Let's see. Dimetrodons were apex predators of the Permian era which hunted Diplocolus. True. And you will find Dimetrodons of the normal as well as the aberrant variety. Some of them are chilling out in the night even though they generally do not do that. They mostly chill out basking in the sun and some of them are moving. On the other side, you get the Dimetrodon's compatriot from the Permian period, which is the Moss Chops. Moss Chops having debate about food and weather, because in Ark, Moss Chops eat practically everything. That's why they are having debate about this, what to eat and what not to eat. Seems to have there are two factions. We actually have one of these guys over there. Next, we come to the Diplocolus exhibit. Let's see. Diplocolus from the Carboniferous chasing a uh, coelacanth. Do you know, right? Coelacanths actually emerged in the Devonian period and they are still alive today. They are living fossils. In fact, we considered these coelacanths extinct until one of these things were found live somewhere in Africa. So we have the Diplocolus is there. We should also be having aberrant variants. I think this is the aberrant variant. Next we come here. We see the Pelagornis. Pelagornis is the largest bird by wingspan ever paid it's you can think of it as a gigantic condor you can actually see i've intentionally made sure that the that i'm doing these videos at night so that you can actually see how good the lighting is there is actually lighting even underneath the water like this just to make it look really nice let's see what are these things we have okay we are going to cover these things later on so we have the pelagornis that are not moving for some reason
Okay. The dodo. The dodo gets special treatment. So we have two dodos in two sides and there we have something interesting. So it's a message from a dodo in arc. So it says, we were peaceful and we were free. Then sailors came with their dogs, their pigs and we became extinct in our own home. And you can think of this thing as more or less a life lesson, not just for dodos, but for even humanity. Just something to think about and ponder. So we have one of these sailors, which, uh, well, this guy definitely looks like uh, British. And we have three of their dogs taking out a dodo. Or you could think of this as a pirate also. It doesn't necessarily have to be British. Thankfully in Ark, you have dodos and you can actually pet them. You actually go there and you can pet them or carry them or in this case, interact with them. Same thing can be done for penguins and well what happened was I set out these penguins on wonder but I had forgotten that mating should also be disabled and they have mated and you had this scenario. Whole bunch of penguins. If I were to ac accidentally hit one of them then everything is going to start fighting each other it will be all hell will break loose well i took this i took this scenery from a bbc planet earth a documentary you could actually see that uh, the father penguin actually get, tries to get food from a very long range then come back and tries to regurgitate that food out to eat the younglings. Next we have the trilobite, the most prehistoric creature in arc. So if you have watched my first video you will note that trilobites are probably the first one of the first significant creatures ever to be found in planet earth they were right up till there from the first cambrian periods you could think of trilobites as practically the ancestors to everyone us dinosaurs mammals reptiles everyone next we get hesperonis When I was making these different paddocks, I had to think how big each paddock should be and which dino or which animal should be placed in which paddock. It was not a very simple thing actually. I had to take hours just to think about these placements, the size and dimension of these things because I'm not using any mods so I cannot use any artificial uh, way to make the paddocks look natural. So everything had to be worked around the mechanics of vanilla arc. Next we get otters. Otters seem to be all begging you to give it some food. But otters are not something that begs because otters are actually apex predators in the Amazon rainforest. So giant river otters from the Amazon rainforest in groups they can overpower piranhas, jaguars, caimans, even anacondas. There are actually videos in which Ja a single jaguar is perched atop a small branch and it's desperately clinging onto the branch because there are a whole group of otters are in the water beneath trying to harass and eventually drown it. A single otter is no threat to a jaguar but a group of otters can actually kill a jaguar. That's how powerful they are. And 
and here we have our otters some of the otters are chilling out in the beach over here some of them I actually had a lot more otters but what, what happened was those otters actually died not even sure the condition of this guy okay, it's still okay but what happened is sometimes due to server restarts these otters just spawn inside the water and when they do they run out of oxygen and they just die I've actually had three or four otters die that way and I made sure that this part the otters will actually swim underneath these places and it would look really beautiful with the blueness of the water and everything else next up we get the carbonemis a normal variety and an R variety okay so they had an incredible bite force capable of killing smaller crocodilians and eating juvenile infant titanoboas wait did you hear that correctly yes you heard it correctly you can see a carbonemis trying to kill a small crocodile and it is even trying to kill a juvenile titanoboa these guys were definitely not herbivorous and uh, peaceful they were actually pretty dangerous for crocodiles and even titanoboas so you can imagine how different it is from uh, Ark's model so we actually have a couple of titanoboas in sorry couple of carbonemis underneath the water and thankfully they do not have an oxygen stat otherwise they would be dead all right from the carbonemis we go, go into the beaver part so this is the only part where we had one of these trees and hence I decided to put the beaver now before I show you the beaver since morning is coming up I want to show you the carquinos part because the lighting is going to go away so this is the part with the carquinos we have three carquinos in total one of them is underneath the water and at night it looks rather nice the darker it is the much better it looks so if there is some kind of fog or haze then this purplish lighting makes it look really like a scene from apparition so let's see jump freeze frames so start of a jump it jumps exactly like this and then it drops let's go back to the beaver so we have a family of beavers here asteroides and we have them more or less chilling out everywhere where did the other thing go So there were actually other beavers also but as I said a couple of them actually died because uh, they lost the oxygen. Let's see okay uh, this exhibit was a very fun thing to make just look at this exhibit <laughs> uh, well I made a typo it's not babies it's babies so an extra a <laughs> dino babies all eagerly rushing towards the arcs milkman a maybe this was a very nice thing to do so uh, you get to see uh, maybe in hospital like gear red white and 
black just like your first aid kits and you have lots of small small dinos you have a you have a baby raptor a baby ut a baby rex a baby uh, allo which is a lot bigger than the rex a baby carno and you also get a baby dinopithecus parlovia a bear and all of them are running to get their favorite enrichment from the nurse the maving and the nurse also has one of those uh, <laughs> dino glass saddle skins this one looks really nice and unique also and that particular one is this guy over here actually it's a it neither a guy nor a girl they don't have a gender they don't have a gender and they are very much hungry not sure why they are not eating they have food here maybe these guys are eating okay we need to deal with this guy later on okay so we need to place one of those straws somewhere there right so now we can head on to the underwater part and this is the one that i'm going to be covering in the next video and by the way the underwater part and the two things after this those these three are really special to me they took a long time and they were much more intricate and much more detailed than these guys so i hope you stay on and catch the rest of them and i hope to see you in the next videos thank you